Okay, today I had this Apollo 2000 robot. Now this was made in Japan by Horikawa in the late 1960s to early 1970s. They also had a version where behind the fly eyes there's uh, red panels. And that one, if I remember, it was called Super Robot. And it um, seems like it was branded for somebody else. I can't remember, Deerham or somebody. At any rate, this is the Apollo 2000 version. And it was initially sent to me for having a uh, broken switch as the main complaint, but it actually had many, many other problems, and we're going to talk about those. So as far as the switch goes, yes, I've got a, a junk room where I save old robots and toys and parts, and I was able to find a switch that in fact would fit, and I could use the same metal tabs to uh, hold that in place. And should you ever need to get into the top of this type of robot, you can see you have a a tab right here which you carefully straighten up and one here that you carefully straighten up and the whole top of this body is uh, kind of shoehorned into the front plate so once those tabs are straight you lift this up and then pull back and it'll come out. There are two tabs in the rear that you re-straighten so when you go to re-insert everything together you put the head in an angle to the front toenails in pushes down on those and then you have to reach in these holes with something very small like a drill bit or something very sturdy and bend those little tabs back. So you get the head off, get in there, you can then work on the switch to replace it. I went ahead and went a step further and removed this whole front panel. When you've got the top off you can see the top two tabs in there. You straighten those out and then you can pull the whole front off. It just comes right out like that. So now you're into the whole guts of the thing, and once you're into the guts of the thing, you can then easily lubricate the top of the motor shaft, the bottom of the motor shaft. You can hit the uh, motor brushes with a little bit of spray cleaner, get the whole thing rubbed up. And in this case, the uh, rotomatic part of this toy, this is a, a walker and a rotomatic, was all gummed up. So I lubed all the shafts to make sure mechanically everything could move freely. Um, there had been some grease in between the body and the lower part and that was all gummed up to where the robot was barely able to perform the rotomatic function it, in which case you have two options one you can try to clean the grease out uh, with solvents and rags and paper and slipping in there or you can try using some uh, light grade oil like 3-in-1 oil or gun oil or sewing machine oil and re-lube it to get that going the other problem that it had was uh, both its legs, uh, the leg, as you can see, each leg is tin and they're pressed together in a seam in the middle. But the seam isn't totally solid. The two halves of the legs can shift a little bit. And if they do shift, then the leg kicks. So when I received this robot, it was standing like, like that because both legs had shifted their seams. And yeah, I could have just lined them back up, but they would have shifted again. So. In order to stop them from continually moving and shifting, you take the bottom of the feet off. You've got four tabs there, which releases the toe cover. It lifts up a little bit. And then you can pull an axle out on the back, and the front is tabbed onto a linkage. Remove that. Now you've got the whole foot mechanism off, and you can get into the inside and the back side of the legs. Grind them clean so that you can... Uh, once you line them up straight again, you can go in with a soldering gun and lay a little little ball of solder on the insides of the legs so they can no longer can no longer do this, no longer shift and get out of whack. That little ball of solder there, then they're they're locked. Put all that back together, and as long as you have it uh, apart, make sure that the rear wheel ratchets are working. Usually on these toys, the front ones are free spinning, but the rear ones have the ratchet where it'll roll forward free, but locks in reverse. You can kind of hear that. So make sure that ratchets are working right before you put it together and then you'll be all set. And that's uh, about all we got to do other than doing the demo on it, which I'll do right now. I'm going to have it walk away. There you have it, that's your Apollo 2000 robot.